Hello everyone, and welcome again to an Atomic Emporium video. Blah blah blah, fancy intro. So, today I'm going to look at things that are fluorescent and or glow in the dark. I have many of them right here. As you can tell, I have many glowy things. Some of them you might know what are, some of them might look unfamiliar. I'll be explaining all of them. So first off, I might point out that fluorescence is actually, um, how does it work? How, do, how does anything work? Basically, you have an atom, which has a core and electrons on certain orbits. If you shine the correct wavelength of energy, or the correct color of light, at the atom, occasionally, if you apply the energy to just the right place, an electron will hop from a low orbit up to a higher orbit. So it'll actually jump from one orbit up to the next. And then as soon as you stop bombarding with this light, it'll hop back down. But it can't hop back down without releasing the energy again. So, as it hops back down from that high orbit down to its comfortable lower orbit again, it releases energy of a different spectrum, which tends to be visible light. There are lots of different fluorescent things. And also, if the electron hops back down after a little while, instead of hopping down immediately, it might be stable for a little while and then suddenly hop back down. If it hops down immediately, it's fluorescent, like this panel right here. I can put my hand over it and it immediately stops glowing. There's no time delay. Well, maybe there's a little bit, but not much. So that, all the electrons just jump back down as soon as the ultraviolet light is gone. But something like this, for example, this bag over here, will keep glowing for quite some time after it's put in shadow. So that glows for a long time. Um, fluorescence, or fluorescence is when something glows and then goes away immediately, like this. And then it's photoluminous powder, or whatever it is when something uh, charges with sun like photo and then glows for a while, luminous. So, um, fluorescence, this device here is actually a panel from a night light. It has two wires on it and when 120 volts AC is applied it excites the phosphor in here and it fluoresces because it doesn't just need ultraviolet light, it fluoresces with other things too. It's just lucky for me that this happens to fluoresce with ultraviolet because it's a good example. I'd like to be able to get the phosphors out of here because, because, because they might also fluoresce with radioactivity, which would be fun to look at, but I can't seem to figure out how to remove the plastic layers. So fluorescent things also occur naturally, like this rock, which is a mineral known as autonite. Some of you may have heard of autonite, maybe not, but autonite is famous because it glows green, or it doesn't glow, it fluoresces green, and it is a uranium mineral. So it actually is glowing radioactive uranium, although it doesn't have any persistence. It just kind of sits there and glows if you shine a light at it. Other things, like this light bulb, um, the coating on the inside is meant to glow from the ultraviolet light coming from inside the glass tube, because you can't make white light from plasmatizing gas. So they plasmatize the gas that makes ultraviolet, and then they use a fluorescent compound to turn the ultraviolet into white light that we can see. Basically, they're using the compound to take the ultraviolet use the electrons and then turn it into nice white light coming out. But uh, under short or long wave ultraviolet, which is what I have here, this fluorescence is a kind of a bluish color, which isn't as white as the as when it's on. I might point out my ultraviolet light looks very similar. It's the same kind of twirly bulb. It's uh, so popular as compact fluorescence. Another thing phosphors are used is in vacuum fluorescent displays which actually depends on, on a heated filament, like in a light bulb, which emits electrons, and then a grid, which is basically a mesh, which has high voltage on it, which attracts the electrons, and then behind the grid is a fluorescent chemical, much like this, which when the electrons go through the grid at high speeds and hit it, fluoresces. So because of this, you can control which grids you turn on to control which digits of a number you turn on, or which symbols you turn on. But I can also make it turn on all of them with ultraviolet light because not only are they reactive to electrons, they're reactive to UV. So those are fluorescent items. Another one is uranium glass, which has uranium mixed into clear glass, which tends to fluoresce due to sodium compounds and such with uranium. That's quite a popular item. But then some things, if I turn my light off, continue to glow, namely these bags, these tubes, this whole glass thing. This one might look like it's glowing, but that's actually just light from the screen. So, turning that back on, this is simply a glass ball I blew that I roughly coated the inside with uh, zinc sulfide 
doped in copper, which is a glowing powder, which doesn't last very long, but I can charge this up, and it looks pretty darn bright. Can't really see it from there, but fold it back here, it looks nice and bright. The same with this, it's just a little glass vial with some uh, powder in it, which I can charge up. It glows pretty nice for a while. You can almost read by that when it's so bright, but it goes away in like 10 minutes. And this is some paint made with the same stuff as these, the zinc sulfide, which doesn't last longer. Which is pretty impressive when charged. You can almost, you can see the reflection of it, you can light up the ground a bit, you can almost read with it. And then these, this is the pure zinc sulfide which is used in these and the paint. I actually got it from paint by watering the paint down because zinc sulfide is not soluble in water. And these two are a little more unusual. Um, these are made with aluminates of strontium, so uh, like S-R-A-L-O or something. I don't know the exact chemical formula, but I can look that up. And they dope them in rare earth metals like europium or dysprosium or all kinds of things to make them uh, release the energy more slowly. And these last almost 15 hours. The green one, if you charge it up like that, it's much brighter than the other one. You can clearly see, you can shine it on things, you can read by it looks really bright and it is really bright it's much brighter and it lasts much longer the blue one lasts about the same but is brighter and is this beautiful blue color which is just amazing to me i've never seen something glow blue before everything i had was green and there's also my watch which i believe has the same compound in it this stuff right here because it's a kind of a high quality watch so it wouldn't have this slow junk and have this so these i bought from a place online an ounce at a time. Beautiful, amazingly bright green if you charge them up. You can really just like see by it and use it to read your watch if it didn't already glow, <laughs> which mine does fortunately. So those are amazing. Um, and this lasts like five hours. This lasts 15. This one lasts uh, maybe five if, if you charge it up real well. So I had an idea of what to do with this. I wanted to make a flashlight. In order to use the light most efficiently, I needed a lot of surface area and then a mirror to turn it into a beam, which is what I did with this shiny thing over here, which has a glass tube filled with the powder in the middle of a elliptical reflector. So I can charge that by aiming it at a light because the glass reflects it towards it. And then I have this, which you can shine it at the camera. It looks amazing. You can kind of see by it. It's not like a flashlight or anything, but it works pretty well. But that looks amazing. You can aim it like that, see the green stripes and stuff. Recharge it so it's nice and bright. It just looks so awesome. I really love glowy things. Like, I, I, I go in my room and there's all kinds of glowing stuff lying around and I love it. So, the Atomic Emporium will have for sale these two powders at, uh, buy the gram prices so you can buy just a tiny amount if you just want to play with it like you could buy this much for fairly cheap or you could buy more like this whole bag if you want to uh, paint something with it or play with lasers or something also this is an excellent test of UV lasers which I saw on my website because they are basically ultraviolet and you can see they fluoresce this thing pretty heavily this thing lights up bright bright blue these things both charge pretty well with it the paint you can leave stripes on but the most amazing thing, first off, you can make stripes in that, but these make amazing stripes. You can make stripes like that, you can draw pictures. And these last like twice as long as this stuff. If you just want to sit here and wait for a little while, you can see that. Well, actually, neither, this one doesn't dim because the ultraviolet light's on over here. If I turn that off, this one dims much faster. You can see that. It's amazing stuff. I love glowy things. That's one of the things I say on the main page of my website is if you if you like things that glow or similar things like that. <laughs> so yep, Atomic Emporium now sells glowing powders. If they're popular, if somebody buys them, I'll get more colors and such. But right now I just have the blue and the green. Should be on my store shortly sold in small amounts instead of big industrial amounts. Go check it out and you can have your own glowing powder and make your own forever luminous flashlights.
So, yep, hope I explained fluorescence and glowing things to you. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks.